Hello, and welcome to this presentation on sensitivity analysis as a tool for capital budgeting for BUSN 604, Fundamentals of Business Analysis at American Military University. My name is Matthew Lindholm, and I am presenting this material in pursuit of a Master's of Science in Business Analytics. On the agenda for this presentation, as you can see, I will be discussing what sensitivity analysis is and how it relates to capital budgeting. I will then go over the qualitative and quantitative steps involved with sensitivity analysis. Then I will discuss how risk can be identified through this analysis and applied to capital budgeting. I will talk about the limitations of sensitivity analysis. And finally, I will go over some best practices. What is sensitivity analysis? Sensitivity analysis, also known as what-if analysis, is a tool used to figure out how sensitive a model is to changes in values of a group of independent variables. As a practice, sensitivity analysis can be used on any kind of model, whether it be an environmental model, or a traffic pattern model, or in our case, a financial model. In financial analysis, it helps the financial analyst predict the results of specific actions performed in various conditions. The main benefits of conducting sensitivity analysis include adding credibility to financial models by testing them in many different scenarios, providing the analyst the flexibility to test the model based on the needs of the institution, for instance, testing for a 5-point difference in interest rates over a 25-point difference, and allowing decision-makers to make informed decisions based on the data. It also allows analysts to determine the importance of certain assumptions so that more time can be dedicated to analyzing decisions based on those particular assumptions. So how do we do it? The steps to conducting sensitivity analysis incorporate both qualitative and quantitative data. Setting the base case is largely qualitative and serves as a starting point for the analysis by providing the standard off which all other assumptions are made. It should include things like interest rates, inflation, revenue growth, costs, and expenses, and the decision on what to include relies heavily on the model builder's experience. When identifying key variables, it is important to consider both qualitative and quantitative variables, such as revenue growth rate for a quantitative value and customer loyalty for a qualitative one. Once the important variables are identified, the values of those variables can be changed one by one in order to calculate the outputs based on those changes. Then, dividing the percentage change in the output variable by the percentage change in the input variable gets us the sensitivity for that particular change. Once all sensitivities have been calculated, we need to consider which ones affect the model most and focus on those variables. Then, we develop an interpretation for why those variables may be more sensitive. Finally, in order to make the information more digestible for decision makers, we must visualize the results using charts and tables that compare the most critical variables and how changes to them affect the model. What does this all have to do with risk? Sensitivity analysis, if done correctly, will allow an organization to identify those variables that represent the most risk. It will also provide a quantitative metric by which to measure that risk and provide data by which to make an informed decision. Decision makers can then make budgetary adjustments in order to account for any risks that merit such changes. These can be measured in different ways. Some of the more common methods are the switching values method, the scenario method, and the Monte Carlo simulation method. The switching values method is the most straightforward and involves changing the values of variables one at a time to see how they affect the output. 
In scenario analysis, several variables are changed simultaneously in order to represent a specific scenario the organization is analyzing. This can be used for more complex problems that the switching values method may not be able to properly capture. In situations where inputs may be out of the control of decision makers, a Monte Carlo simulation can be used, which uses a set of random numbers as inputs to demonstrate how the output is affected by chaos. Where would an academic analysis be without a limitation slide? Unfortunately, as with anything, there is no perfect tool to conduct risk assessment in capital budgeting. Sensitivity analysis has some drawbacks that can be seen on the screen. One big shortcoming is the inability for the analysis to accurately capture correlations between variables. For instance, a change in the interest rate variable may very well have an impact on unemployment. But since the analysis only has one output value, these correlations are not accounted for. Now, you may be thinking, what about scenario analysis? Which, as you may remember, involves changing several variables at once. The issue is, even though several variables are being changed, they are still manually being changed and can't fully capture how the variables may correlate. Also along those lines, the assumption that only one factor is changing at a time or independent of other factors is quite an unrealistic assumption. In the real world, one thing is typically linked to many other things. Sensitivity analysis, as you might imagine, is also very time consuming. For the outcome to be meaningful, there is a lot of planning and preparation that goes into it before the analysis even starts. Then, running the calculations, changing one value at a time until the analysis is complete, can also take up a lot of time. There is also a risk of inaccurate results if the analyst does not have a proper understanding of how the variables relate to each other. In other words, there is a lot of room for human error. While there are limitations to sensitivity analysis, it can still be a useful tool for risk assessment in capital budgeting. In order to maximize the benefits of sensitivity analysis, it is important to use the tools available to assist with collecting the data and running the calculations. Some of these tools include Microsoft Excel for calculations and Power BI for charting and visualization. Along those lines, Understanding the output of sensitivity analysis can be quite challenging. Therefore, communicating the results effectively to stakeholders is key. This can be done using clear visualization such as data tables and tornado charts, which you can see an example of on the screen. Finally, remember, Sensitivity analysis is just one part of a comprehensive risk management strategy in capital budgeting. It should be combined with other methods. Here is a list of the references I used to build this presentation. I encourage anyone watching this to take a look at these documents if they want to gain a deeper understanding into sensitivity analysis. I personally would recommend Carl Berg's book as it gives a very good breakdown on how to do a lot of this analysis using Excel and Power BI. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or reach out to me directly. This isn't the typical content for this channel, but if you enjoyed it, let me know by hitting the like and subscribe buttons and leaving a comment below. I may do more educational content if you like it. And thank you for watching.